All right. Big day on Wall Street. Markets rallied 1,201 points today. 1,201 points. Maybe I should have bought the new apartment instead of renting it. I don't know. Anyway, maybe inflation's playing a role here. Maybe the platoon taking over the house is playing a role. Joining us to tell us all about it is my great friend and colleague, Charles Payne, host of the superb show, Making Money, right here on Fox Business. Charles, thank you ever so much for coming on. It's great to be here. Uh, 1201 is an impressive rally. 1201 is a big number for, I'm mean, just using the Dow as the overall. Um, what you make of it? That's 3.6%. NASDAQ, 7%. Oh! 7%. Whoa. 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 That's one of the best sigh relief rallies I've ever seen. Huh. Uh, so, yeah, there's no doubt a combination of factors. Uh, the CPI report, the inflation report, came in better than expected. That's yep. the whole bet. By the way, last, the last CPI report came in fractionally higher. It was 8.2. The street was looking for 8.1. And we still rallied 2.7%. Mm. So it was almost like the fix was in. Mm. Uh, you know, for like every, this was, a, this was a coiled spring. Remember the market got hit yesterday. This goes to your theory with the, the midterm elections because of confusion. All the headlines are like even the house is up for grabs. Right. Those headlines have gone away. That concern has gone away. It should be noted that midterm rallies are the, one of the best seasonal. They happen every single time. Mm. It's, and, and particularly with a Democrat in their first year in office because those years typically end up being bad for the markets. The ensuing rally, the bounce back rally is phenomenal. It could be up to 17% over now, over now the next 12 months. It was, I really find interesting, Larry, is that for presidential cycles, third year, never been a recession. Uh. So in a way, President Biden should be happy <laughs> that the Republicans will take the House, stop the spending, and maybe, just maybe, <laughs> fend off for an official recession. That's a year <laughs> after the Fed dramatically tightens, though. So I'm just saying... Monetary lags are long and variable, according to Milton Friedman. So the big, big tightening comes in this year, 22. You, you have to worry about recession in 23, don't you? You do have to worry about it. And, you know, things like bond yields have inverted. And those, all these classic signals are out there. And still, though, a session like today kind of underscores the fact that just maybe, uh, you know, maybe there's still a chance of a so-called soft landing mm -hmm. and the recession could be uh, shallow. You know, listen, I, I don't think the Fed is, is going to live up to the rhetoric. I know that Powell talks tough. Uh, he wants to be tough. But I don't think, I just think the circumstances are so much different than what Paul Volcker is around politically, economically, financially, where GDP to debt is. All the things that make it tough for the Fed to completely crush this economy, I, I think, are in his way. So we'll see. This is a, obviously it just shows that occasionally the market can go up, I think, in 2022. That's a good reminder. I know. I'm just rethinking this as I listen to you because we found this fabulous apartment. And we're going to rent it. Maybe I ought to just buy it. If, is this rally have legs? Tell me. How's my net worth going to be? <laughs> just, I think it'll be better. I think, <laughs> I think one year from now it will definitely be better. And a oh, lot of that oh. has to do with cutting off the spigots. Right. Now, there's still a lot of cash in the, in the spigot that can't be cut off, right? This so-called Inflation Reduction Act mm -hmm. feeds inflation. Uh, the student loan thing, which is just the most elitist, I, I can't understand it. So the President Biden is going to feather the bank accounts of the folks who can survive this inflation more. They're going to go out and spend the money on frivolous things, which is good for him, right, because the GDP report will look better. But it's bad for people who are struggling, mm -hmm. folks who did not get a college degree. It, it's just the most unfair, one of the most unfair things he did uh, uh, while in office. So we still got about a trillion dollars out there that somehow the Fed's got to figure out a way to fend that off as they continue to try. What I hate is when I hear economists, and I bring them on the show every day, say that there's excess cash out there, excess savings, which is an oxymoron. Savings is savings, right? But excess. But if you look at the Fed, where the excess is, the vast majority is in, are in households who saved that money. Yeah. They didn't get it from STEMI checks. The folks who got it from STEMI checks, right. they're almost done. They don't have a Why are you going to right, Why are you going to punish them? It's just so backwards, and you just kind of wonder if maybe Powell, there could be a Powell 4.0. And he gets another epiphany like he did in 2019 mm. after he jacked up high rates up four so times. All these points you're making on student loans and the savings rate and so forth, it's like this stuff is coming at the expense of the have-nots right. in order to favor the haves, 
which is, and according to all these left wingers running Washington, not what they're supposed to do, but that's what they're doing. But I'm interested. You think the rally will have some legs? I think it will. I think it that's will. That's important. I, and I think these and, things... and Nasdaq. Can I, I meant to say this, but I lost track because of my senior status. Um, interest rates came down quite a bit today in the open market, did they not? That's supposedly good for tech stocks. That 10-year yield under 4% is the magic number. Closed under 4%. Really, technically, it could go to 3.6, 3.5. That would be huge. You would see this Nasdaq rally really, this ignition will continue. So, because a lot of this stuff is, has nothing to do with fundamentals at all. Mm. Some of these stocks are so oversold. Should Meta be down 70%? Yeah, I know the metaverse is far, far fetched in reality as years from now, but it shouldn't be down that much. Should Microsoft be off 40% from the highs? No way. You know, so some of this stuff is exogenous, it has nothing to do with fundamentals. If you can take that out of the way and we refocus on fundamentals, you'll get some great leadership there. Last one, very important, and nobody knows it better than you. We're talking crypto crash here. <laughs> crypto crash, and Tom Brady's not having his best year on the field, off the field, and how much has he gotten wiped out in this oh, crypto crash? I pray that these reports aren't true. I mean, I've read that he and his uh, now soon-to-be ex-wife put their entire fortune into it. I pray no. Ooh. 650 Ooh. million Whoa. with FTX. I pray that's not the case. Listen, we saw a lot of famous people lose a lot of money with, with Madoff. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, I was just reading an article about how the VC world kind of rubber stamped, you know, this, this, this sort of what they call late stage stuff, and they just rubber stamped this like Theranos. And it gets this gold seal of approval from Silicon Valley, and then Wall Street takes it. And, you know, it's, I just pray that's not the case mm. uh, because it would be just, you know, Tom would be playing for 10 years. <laughs> He'll end up on the Jets at some oh, point. Now this does explain <laughs> some certain things. Um, the guy who runs this crypto crash thing, was it FTX? Yeah, Sam Bankman Free. He lost over a billion. Uh, more than that. How I mean, much? Well, he started Monday worth almost $15.5 billion. Yesterday, I think he was down to like a buck, two bucks. I mean, I mean seriously, I'm not being even facetious here. Whoa. We, you know, listen, Whoa. all kinds of reports out there. Here's the thing. He put out, he tweeted out, an apology today mm. that was the worst apology in history. Mm. This guy is, is a, I'm telling you right now, it, there are some reports from, there was Reuters, I think also Dow Jones, uh, that maybe they took customer money mm. and traded that perhaps in an effort to save the whole thing. Oh. And that made it even worse. Speaking of Madoff. Yeah. So there's probably fraud as well as stupidity. There's some speculation about that. There was speculation he was on a run. I mean, again, he tweeted out, we don't know where the hell he is. He tweeted out, this half-ass apology that was the most embarrassing thing ever. Uh, this is ugly stuff. You know, and you and I both are really, we push back on regulation. Mm -hmm. They need some regulation. Yeah. They need some guardrails, and they yes. need someone to yes. help the yes. individual out there. Yes. And FDIC, something, because so many of these exchanges have blown up, and individual investors are getting wiped out. Mm -hmm. I mean, wiped out so bad, and the authorities aren't looking out for them at all. All right. Charles Payne.